Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are looking at something called Pose Animator. Now this is a free and open source project and it is all about driving a 2D vector graphics based application uh, using a set of bones that is actually calculating from your webcam. So we're going to take a quick look at it and then I'm going to basically stop the video and do the hands on part, show you how to actually take advantage of this stuff. So first we have the demonstration and the reason why I'm doing this in two parts is my laptop is sitting on a chair on top of my kitchen table in order to make the, the field of view work for you. So as you can see, as I get back, it tracks me. If I get back far enough, there you can see, it's actually picking up my legs. Unfortunately, I'm at a wall now, but I can move things around and you'll see it tracks and updates the vector graphic skeleton accordingly. And I can also, here's where it kind of fails a little bit. If I go side to side, it starts to go a little bit off, uh, but for the most part, it works. And the cool thing is you can see as I get up closer, the amount of face tracking that's going on. Now, she lags a bit, but if I do exaggerated motions, it picks them up. And that's kind of essentially what we're looking at here today. We've also got the ability to show uh, a little bit more detail. This is the control rig that is driving uh, from my motions her actions, very kind of cool in that regard. It is a bit of a beast of a process, even on my machine that's fairly current and new. We're running at 10 to 20 frames per second, unfortunately. Uh, but you can see it, it can be used to drive an SVG-based skeleton. So what you could do with this in a game development world is you could actually have this recording out to uh, sprite sheets or you could pull out the, the data and kind of apply it after the fact. You really kind of get rid of a lot of the slowdown we've got going on. But that's kind of the process we're looking at today. There's actually a second part to this as well. We're gonna head on back here. This is from the page. I will show you all that. All the link details will be down below, but there's also this demo. And it's a very similar process, but in this case, it is using the um, uh, a static image to drive it. So same kind of concept. Uh, we've got the avatar over here. We can switch between a boy and a girl. By the way, I could have done that on the other one as well, and I didn't. Uh, so you can see here, it's taking from the image, detecting where the skeleton is and the facial and then recreating it over here. And we've got a couple of different images to play with. So we've got a guy holding a beer. And you can see it's kind of picking up the facial animations as well. We go down here, we've got a full body shot of a girl in an actual pose, and you can see them picking it up on the other end. So uh, that is essentially what this tool does. The next part of this, I'm gonna switch over to a headset. I'm gonna walk you through the process of actually getting it up and running. There's a couple of gotchas right now, but for the most part, it's pretty easy. So I will be right back. All right, on to the technical bit. Sorry for the jump in audio difference. It's just I couldn't work uh, standing up. Sorry. Uh, so here we are now. Um, again, exactly where we were. Now we're going to show you the process of actually get this guy up and running. You're going to need a couple of things installed. You're going to need to have uh, Node.js and you're going to need to have Yarn installed. And unfortunately, there's a couple of glitches with the current setup, but I'll walk you through that whole process now. So we're going to head over to this repository. It's Yeemount and it's Pose Animator on GitHub. It's under the Apache 2 license, you may notice, but what you want to do is come in here and go clone or download and grab the link right there. And then you're just going to fire up uh, your command prompt, go to the directory where you're going to install it. Uh, YouTube demo. All right. I already got one. Okay. Uh, MD YouTube. All right. And now what you're going to do is just do a git clone and pull that repository down. Uh, pretty clean, straightforward. It, it's funny. It goes from 15 to done. All right. So that's a very Microsoft style progress bar. Once that's done, what you would normally do right now is just run yarn, assuming you have yarn installed, uh, and then yarn watch. Problem is it doesn't actually work. There's a few problems here and I'll show you them right now. So Explorer, open up that directory. You're going to see here, impose animator. You've got this package.json right here. And we're going to go ahead and open that up with our code editor of choice. All right, and there's a couple of things we've got to change here. There's a there's a dependency here that doesn't currently work. It's this paper dependency right here. So I'm gonna instead grab it remotely. So we're gonna say anything over 0.12.1, like so. All right, so that is the one change you need to make. The other change you need to do is on the watch. And what we wanna do is say dash dash no source maps like that. All right. So with those two setups, everything should work fine. Go ahead and close down. Actually, I'll leave it open in case I screwed up. Uh, so I'm going to switch into, uh, what's this called? Pose animator like so. And we just run yarn. Now yarn is going to go out, run all, grab all of the, uh, the dependencies and such that our project works or depends on. You're going to notice if you didn't make that first change, you're going to get a dependency problem on paper. This is what that change actually did. And now in theory, you should just be able to run yarn and then watch. 
Now, this will fail if you don't do that no source maps, at least for now. Uh, all right, for some reason, port 1234 is in use, so we're on port 54023. You'll notice it will automatically launch in the browser for you, and the two demos we were just looking at are here. So the camera feed demo, go ahead and run that. All right, there you go. As you see, I am now a giant scary owl. I still have hand movement, like you can see here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a little closer now, so it's not going to work, but you're going to see here, you've got additional options when you install the local version. So we're going to go over here. You can see we've got the boy, girl, abstract. It loses a little something. And then we got Blathers, which is the owl. And then finally, Tom Nook, who has no face. Or a mouth, I mean. Uh, again, you've got the ability to, to see what's going on and, and such. And I'm going to flip on back. That really kills performance, by the way. And then you still got the image example available right here. Now, you're going to notice in the image example, um, you have those additional avatars as well that will have the, the pose applied to them. Like so. Like that. Uh, same number of images, but we can actually add our own images. You can also get the labels for what each... Uh, area of the control mesh is. And we're going to look at that next. So once you've got all that, I showed you how to build it, how to bring it down. Uh, now we can show you a little bit of how to customize it. And one key thing you're probably going to want to do is if you come in here, you're going to notice um, under resources right here, if you want to bring your own images in, go to images. That's where all of these come from. You can drop whatever PNG or JPEG in uh, and they'll be available here. You're going to have to do a reload of the web page, but I'll show you the process of adding the code to make it work as well. But you can bring your own in. You'll notice in the title graphic they used Ernie. Uh, so you can bring in any PNG JPEG file. But once you've done that, you actually have to come back here to resources, back to the root. You'll notice we're in static image.html. Just come on down here to static image.javascript. Open that up in code as well. And you're going to see here, all you need to do is basically create a duplicate of this line. So you do import as and then my body from and then path to your image. And then down here, you just add it to the list. So here you'd say whatever your name was up above. So my body. And here you would do your image name dot default and then do save, reload, and your custom images are in for the post version of it. Now, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this, let's head on back over here to the web page. Again, we'll be linked down below. This guy is, let's see right back, Apache 2 licensed, as you see right here. Uh, it is a developer at um, Google, but has no affiliation with Google. Uh, but you see Pose Animator takes a 2D vector illustration based um, and animates it containing curves in real-time data based on recognition results from PoseNet and Face Mesh. Uh, it borrows the idea of skeleton-based animation from computer graphics and applies it to vector characters. Again, not officially supported Google product. So I think this is one of their one in five day projects or whatever they call them, uh, but gives you the basic premise. Now you're gonna notice at the bottom, there's details here for animating your own design. So if you want to create your own SVG, uh, they have instructions on how to set it up and a sample skeleton available right there. But if you come into your project, you'll actually notice they're all available here. So in Pose Animator, uh, we'll go back again into that resources folder like so. Uh, and the sample is right here. So if you want to open up that SVG, I'm going to open this guy up in, uh, uh, why don't I have open with? Oh, there it is. I'm just blind. Uh, Affinity Designer. So you could open this with Inkscape if you want to go the 100% free route. And you're going to see this is like the base skeleton to work from. And they've got instructions on how to set up and use the hierarchy. But basic premise right here, all the groupings, everything that you group off of. But where it'd probably be a better starting point, to be honest, is one of the samples we've actually been using. So we go back here to resources, go into illustration. And here you're going to see all the different options uh, for, uh, let's say, let's open up Blathers. Once again, just open that guy up in your editor of choice. And you will see it is composed of a hierarchy of shapes. Like so, his legs are set up a little weird. You see where the face is set up. That's why we didn't get really good facial control on him is because it was all kind of oriented straight around his beak and nothing else. Uh, but you can see how the skeleton is set up here. So you can see the hierarchies of things. So here is his, uh, let's see, that looks like his top of his face. And that's broken down into various different curves and such that control it. So if you want to create your own animatable SVGs, the process is here. And then wiring them in is sort of the same process. You're going to see in the code, just like we set up the images, 
the SVGs are configured the same way. So just drop your own uh, SVG file that you create into that folder, into the illustrations folder, uh, add the code in the appropriate spots. Keep in mind, you're also going to have to animate the or change the code for the uh, live animation one if you want to. So uh, we'll head back here. I'll show you what I mean. So we've been working with a uh, static image so far. If you want the camera one, this camera.js that you're going to want to edit. But even if you come in here, you're going to notice pretty similar process. Set up your SVG and then define it down here in the list of available avatars. And you can have your own custom SVG in there as well. So what could this be used for? Well, it's fun to play with, uh, so that's a start. Uh, but you could also kind of adapt this code to use it for your creation pipeline. So you, if you're working with an SVG uh, data, you could have this either export out skeletal information, which is gonna be a lot less like, d demanding than it is to capture it. Um, and you could probably do an adapter to something like uh, Dragon Bones or uh, the Godot built-in bone system or Spine, etc. you know, Sprite uh, same sort of premise. You could probably do an adapter pretty easily from this code, or you could have this basically record out to sprite sheets and just be damned with the whole SVG thing, but use this as part of your creation pipeline and have it export out sprite sheets instead, or it's just a toy. That's about it. Uh, so anyways, that is Pose Animator, an interesting project. I figured I'd share it with you guys. It's, it's, uh, Again, I don't know it's going to be immediately useful to that many people, but it is definitely interesting, at least to me. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.